bring in Einar Tangen in Beijing, a senior fellow at the Taiha Institute. Einar, good to have you again. All right, so right after Russia invaded Ukraine, analysts raised the question, will China do the same in Taiwan? But how this has been going for Russia doesn't make that possibility far less likely. The supposition that somehow China is preparing uh, to launch an invasion is, uh, I think, er erroneous. Uh, that's a talk point that's being pushed by Washington as it uh, tries to vilify China. That's Beijing's point of view. Uh, the fact is, in 1973, the U.S. kicked uh, uh, Taiwan out of the U.N. They're not, not a member. Uh, their Security Council seat was given to China. There was a one China policy that was accepted by the U.S., now, years later, uh, you're seeing uh, the U.S. Uh, current administration trying to rewrite that. So, yes, China is concerned. Um, they're also concerned about the number of uh, U.S. warships that are sailing through on a monthly basis through the Taiwan Straits, uh, in their opinion, saying that there's a freedom of navigation uh, issue. Well, China's not going to shut down uh, navigation. It's 40 percent of their economy. So. These, these are all pretexts. This is a, a global competition between uh, the U.S. and China. The U.S. sees itself as king of the hill, and it doesn't want any uh, pretenders. You saw this in uh, Japan in the 70s when they made Japan finally knuckle under and sign the Plaza Accord. And since that time, Japan's economy has more or less gone sideways. Well, China has an enormous military. So if it did have the consideration that any time would be a good time to act militarily against Taiwan. I mean, when it sees what has happened in Ukraine with Russia's military, also which dwarfed Ukraine's, you know, it, it wouldn't be a foregone conclusion that things would go well for China. Plus, the sanctions against Russia, that has to be uh, a, a deterrent, a large deterrent for a long term. Well, I, you know, I think it's erroneous to kind of draw the uh, conversation into this idea that China is planning or contemplating this. That's not true. As I said, this is a talk point that's being spread by Washington. Uh, as far as China is concerned, uh, unless you can attach a motor to the back of Taiwan, uh, it is always going to be next door to China. And at some point, uh, there will be some sort of reunification. It's in their constitution. It was accepted by the U.S. The issue was whether it would be taken by force. Nothing has changed except, as I said, this uh, growing uh, competitive great power competition between the U.S. who sees China as an economic threat. Right. But the conversation is out there. I mean, people, analysts, experts yes, want to by look at, what, by, at by what's people going in Washington. On. I, I agree with you yeah, that, that the conversation that, doesn't yeah. always match the reality. But for those of us who are out there, for the people who are watching and wondering if that was a possibility, that's why it's discussed. So we want to get that information out there. Or were there any indications that this was a consideration at all of China's? No, I mean, within any government, you know, I have 1.4 billion people. Uh, there's a huge government. Are there going to be hawks within China who says it's time to take back Taiwan? Yes, they're always there. And there are always a, a much greater number of people who just say, pipe down, uh, this is not the, the time or the occasion to be using military tactics. However, that could change. If the U.S. continues what uh, Beijing sees as provocation, sending more armaments to uh, Taiwan, uh, treating them as an independent nation, trying to get them into the UN, trying to make them, in essence, a needle point uh, against China. Yeah, you, at some point, just like with Russia, you're going to push too far and then something's going to happen. The U.S. will claim, oh, you know, these totalitarian governments have, have uh, you know, ganged up against freedom-loving people. Nonsense. These are deliberate provocations by the U.S. as they seek to implement a strategy of trying to use proxies instead of direct uh, U.S. troops. They want to use other countries, sacrifice them in a grand PR war to make it seem that American exceptionalism is the only way to go. Well, China is not without its provo provocations, though, Einar, vastly expanding its military, militarizing islands in its region, and angering its neighbors by doing so. But we have to leave it there. But thanks so much, as always, for joining us.